We begin the Gemara today towards the bottom of Yutes Samut Beis, about 10 lines from the bottom, where it says, B'may Okimta. This Gemara is discussing the Mishnah that said that a Cheresh cannot read the Megillah. And obviously we're talking about a Cheresh that can talk, but he cannot hear. Usually that's a person that's a full Bandas, a bar- Bardas. Only if you're deaf-mute, you're usually potter from all mitzvahs. But this person can speak. But because we're talking about a mitzvah of reading the Megillah, and you have to be able to hear what you're reading. So over here, if you can't hear, you're not, not yet to the Megillah, you can't read the Megillah. That's what it said in our Mishnah. So we had a discussion in the Gemara before, whose opinion is this? Is this going according to Rav Yaisi that says that a Cheresh, even Bidiyevet, even Bidiyevet is not going to be Yaitse at all, if you can't hear. Or the Gemara says maybe it's going according to Rabbi Yehuda, because Rabbi Yehuda, even though Rabbi Yehuda says that a Cheresh will be Yaitse, but that's only Bidiyevet. Lechat Chile, even Rabbi Yehuda agrees that a Cheresh should not be reading the Megillah. So when it says in our Mishnah, Chutz Mecheresh, maybe it's only talking about Lechat Chile. And it goes according to Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. So that's, that's what we learned until here. Right now, the Gemara is going to discuss Rabbi Yehuda's opinion itself, because it's actually not so clear what Rabbi Yehuda's opinion is. And the point the Gemara is going to discuss is, when Rabbi Yehuda says that a, that a person that says Shema, or a person that reads the Megillah, and he could not hear it, that he's Yaitse, did he mean to say Yaitse only be the Yavet? Or does he mean to say Yaitse even Lechat Chila? That's the discussion of the Gemara here. Let's see inside. So what did you say up until this point? That the Mishnah that says that a Cheresh should not read the Megillah goes according to Rabbi Yehuda with the Yevet. And when Rabbi Yehuda said that a Cheresh could read Shema, even if he's not hearing it, that's only with the Yevet. But you should not. So if so, that would mean that we only have two opinions. We had before Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi says even with the Yevet. If he doesn't hear, you're not Yaitse. And what did Rabbi Yehuda say? That Bidi Yevad, you will be Yaitse. Lechat Chilis, though you should not. But if so, there's, a, there's another opinion that we find. Who's that going to go according to? Elo, the Tani, so now this that we learned in the Braise, it says, Yehuda Berei, the Rabshem ben Pazi, Rabbi Yehuda Berei, the Rabshem ben Pazi said, Cheresh HaMedaber, Ve'enu Shemeya, person that's a Cheresh, so he does speak, but he can't hear. Tairim l'chatchila. So he can take truma l'chatchila. What happens when you take truma? It's a mitzvah, like any other mitzvah, and you have to make a bracha. So the question is, when he's making the bracha to be mafresh to truma, does he have to hear the bracha that he's saying? Similar to the mitzvah menataisis over here explains. Similar to the mitzvah of saying kriyishma, which is a mitzvah menataira, when it comes to making a bracha, what's a bracha? A bracha is a mitzvah mit rabbanam. So the Chachamim usually make all of their Takanas Ke'endairais, similar to Menateireh. So if Menateireh, there is a halacha that you have to hear what you're saying, some of the Rabbana, you should have the same thing. But what does it say in this Braise? That he can take the Truma, the Chachila, and the fact that he can't hear the Brachi he's saying, doesn't matter whatsoever. So this is even the Chachila. So now Mani, according to whose opinion, is this Braise here? E Rabbi Yehuda, would it be Rabbi Yehuda? Can't be. The Yevedin, Rabbi Yehuda, according to your interpretation now, says only be the Yeved, would you be Yaitzah Shema if you can't hear? L'chadchila loy. But now L'chadchila, Rabbi Yaisi, if that, but I said there would be Rabbi Yaisi, the Yeved nami loy. Rabbi Yaisi says even be the Yeved, you can't say Shema, you're not going to be Yaitzah at all, even be the Yeved. So who, according to who is that opinion there? So now the Gemara goes back and says, so we're going to have to switch Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, the way we understood Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Ve'elamai, Rabbi Yehuda, so what are you going to say that this is Rabbi Yehuda? And va'afilu chatchila. When Rabbi Yehuda says that you yaitza kriyashma, even if you can't hear, he meant it to say even the chatchila. Not a, that's not a problem, not a problem, even the chatchila. Which would mean then that the Mishnah here, that it says cheresh, is not Rabbi Yehuda. The Mishnah by Megillah, that is, over here, is not Rabbi Yehuda. That's going to have to be Rabbi Yaisi. So we're switching now to understand our understanding of Rabbi Yudah's opinion, even the Chathila. So now, Gemara now brings another Braise, and this is regarding benching. So now this, that it says in the Braise regarding benching. A person should not bench in his heart. Benching in your heart over here means when you say the word so low that you can't hear the words. So you shouldn't do that. If you did bench and you couldn't hear the words you were saying, Yatza, you are going to be Yatza. So here, in this b'raise, it does make that distinction of l'chat and b'di'evet. L'chat don't say it so low, but b'di'evet, you are yaitze. <coughs> now, Mani, who is this opinion? If, according to what you just said, Rabbi Yehuda says that even l'chat you can say it low enough that you can't hear, so who's this opinion? Loi Rabbi Yehuda, v'loi Rabbi Yaisi. It's not going to be not Rabbi Yehuda and not Rabbi Yaisi. 
Because I, Rabbi Yehuda, if this would be Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, I feel like you just said that according to Rabbi Yehuda, even like Chile, you could say it low enough that you can't hear. I, Rabbi Yaisi, and if it would be Rabbi Yaisi's opinion, I feel like the Yavid nami loy. Rabbi Yaisi says, even with the Yavid, it's not an issue. Sorry, again, even with the Yavid, you're not Yaitz at all. So, so we have over here this b'raisa about benching that says about l'chatchila. That l'chatchila you shouldn't, but with the Yavid you could. So according to who is that? So therefore the Gemara says, l'aylam, really what we just said it is true. Rabbi Yehuda va'afil l'chatchila. Rabbi Yehuda holds that even l'chatchila, you don't have to say it loud enough that you should hear. So the Mishnah, our Mishnah regarding the Cheresh that can't read the Megillah, that's Rabbi Yaisi, not Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says, even l'chatchila, you don't have to say it loud. V'loy kashya. And there's no question here. We had a contradiction here. One b'raisa says that even l'chatchila, you can take the truma without a problem. And then the other one, by benching, it said only b'diyeve. So who are these two opinions? So the Gemara is going to bring another b'raisa here where we find more opinions. For like Kashi, it's not a question because hadi day, hadi rabbe. One thing is what Rabbi Yehuda's own opinion is. And another thing is the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda that he heard in the name of his teacher. The Tanya and Abraisa we learned, Rabbi Yudha, I'm a Mishum, Rabbi Laza ben Azariye, Rabbi Yudha said in the name of Rabbi Laza ben Azariye, Hakaira es Shema, Tzarach she Yashmi al Aznai. When you reach the Shema, so you should say it loud enough that you can hear it. Shenema, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alakein Hashem Achad, which means Hashmeya al Aznachat, Mashatamaitzim Ipicha. Say it loud enough that you can hear what's coming out of your mouth. So this Lashen of Rabbi Laza ben Azariye, Tzarach, Tzarach la Shmiya, what does that mean? Tzarach means the Chatchila you should. But b'diyeved, you're still going to be yaitze. So it's Rabbi Laza ben Azariah that makes a distinction between l'chatchila and b'diyeved. Rabbi Yehuda himself says, even l'chatchila, it's not a problem, you don't have to say it loud enough to be able to, to hear it. So, those, so we see over here that the, there are these two opinions of l'chatchila or b'diyeved. And then it says in the Braisa, a third opinion, Rabbi Meir Aymer, Rabbi Meir says, Asher anoichi mitzavcha yoyim, alavavecha, this is what I command you today, on your heart, what does alavavecha mean? Acha kavona salev heinein advarim. The main thing is the kavona in the heart. Even if you're saying the word so low that you can't hear what you're saying, you're going to be yaitzeh. So here you see that Rabbi Meir's opinion is that even l'chatchila, you yaitzeh, you don't have to say it loud enough. So the Gemara says, oh wait a minute, now we have a new opinion, Rabbi Meir. So hashta the asas lahachi. Now that you bring me this b'raise, where Rab Meir clearly says that you could say it even lechatchila without hearing what you're saying, so then I fill it. I fill it. Rab Yehuda kerabe svirale. There's no reason to say that Rab Yehuda deviated from his Rebbe's opinion. You could say Rab Yehuda himself holds like his Rebbe that says that only b'diyeved are you yaitz if you don't hear. Why not? Maybe he holds like his Rebbe. And this that we brought before regarding making the bracha by truma, that even lachatchila, you don't have to hear what you're saying. Rab Meir, that could go according to Rab Meir. Because now we see here that there are three opinions. This whole Gemara began with two opinions, Rab Yehuda and Rab Yaisi. And now we have a third opinion, Rab Meir. So we have three opinions regarding this. Rab Meir says that even lachatchila, you don't have to hear. Rab Yehuda says lachatchila, you should, but b'diyavid, if you don't, you yaitze. And now that we say that that's Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, the Mishnah here that mentions Cheresh regarding the Megillah could be Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. And it's saying that Lachat Chila Cheresh should not read the Megillah. And then you have Rabbi Yaisi. Rabbi Yaisi says, even be the Yavid, even if you went ahead and already read it or said it, the Bracha or the Kriyashma, even be the Yavid, you're not Yaitse until you hear the words that you say. Those are the three opinions of our Sogya. Why are you comparing Trimah to the Megillah? Is the Mitzvah of Trimah no, the bracha, the bracha, the bracha. So I mentioned before, the reason we're comparing it is because we have a cloud called the Tikkun Rabban and Ken Daira Tikkun. So if we find by Kriyashma that you have to hear what you're saying, so Chacham and similar to Menatayra. But Kriyashma is saying, the bracha, um, benching is... Oh, saying, benching, wait, wait, benching is a question. Okay. Be- okay. Yeah. Truma, you actually have to separate. We're not talking about the mitzvah of separating. We're talking about the bracha of the truma. The Chazal will misaken that when you do the mitzvah, you should say a bracha. So could you separate it? At yeah. The yeah. No, the, the separation will for sure be good. That's not the discussion. But we want you to be able to make the bracha when you make the separation. So the question is, should we have a person that can make the bracha do it so that he can... Uh, but Birchah Samazin is actually a question because Birchah Samazin is minatayda. So from where does the Gemara assume that Birchah Samazin is something that you should have to hear? When it comes to Megillah, when it comes to making the bracha and the truma, there we say that it's, these are things that are midrabana. We have a cloud that it's similar to minatayra. 
But Bechus Amazin is Minatayra for itself. How do you know that that has to be uh, said loud enough like Kriya Shema? So Taisus here just says the Gemara knows that there's some kind of a source for it. But Taisus doesn't bring what the source is. You can look at the last line of Taisus and Dafyu Tesam with base. He doesn't explain though. About what? Rabbi Meir, what, what is his uh, opinion? What's his source? Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Meir says, because it says, Alu Vavecha. Because it says in the Torah, Alu Vavecha, the Kavon and the heart, that's the main thing. So if you say the words low enough and you can't hear it, you yaitze. So yeah, that he learns from Alu Vavecha. Now, okay, let's go back to the cotton. Tzad the Mishnah, Rabbi Yehuda, Machshir Bekotten. Rabbi Yehuda says that a cotton could also read the Megillah. And we had before in the Gemara, this refers to a cotton that reached the age of Chinuch, not Mamash a cotton that's uh, very young. So the Gemara brings here, I'm Rabbi Yehuda, cotton a Yisi. I was very young, uh, before Bar Mitzvah. V'kari se'lem, ma'ilem, me'rab tarfin, v'zakein in Belud. And I read the Megillah in front of Rab Tarfin and the elders in Lod. So, so that itself is a proof that my opinion is right, that a cotton can read the Megillah and be yaitze and be maitze, that is, even older people. Amrullah, so they said to Rabbi Yudah, you can't testify about this. You can't testify about something that you did when you were a cotton. Okay, now this is a chiddush here because usually a person that's a godl could testify about when he's a cotton. There's a famous Gemara that says regarding uh, Eid of Tchumen. A person can come and say, I remember when I was a child on Shabbos we wouldn't go past this place. And therefore the, the Eid of the Tchum Shabbos is over here. So you see that you could testify about when you're a cotton. And the Gemara explains, if it's about a subject which is Midrabanon, you could. So over here we're talking about reading the Megillah, which is an obligation Midrabanon. So why can't he testify about what he did as a cotton? So the Tais of Srit says, you must say that the reason is because even though Kriya Sa Megillah is a Takana Midrabanon, but it has sources Minatayra. It does have sources Minatayra, and therefore, when Machmer, that you can't accept what he says, happened to him when he was a cotton. It's a big Chiddush here in this Gemara. Tanya, in another b'raisi we learned, Omar Rebbe, Rebbe said, Kotan Ayisi, I was young, v'karise l'mayla mi Rabbi Yehuda, and I read it in front of Rabbi Yehuda, which is the Tan of our Mishnah, that says that when you're a cotton, you can read the Megillah, fathers. <coughs> Omrullah, so they told Rebbe, Eim mevin raya min amata, you're bringing a raya from Rabbi Yehuda, yeah, we know Rabbi Yehuda was the one that allowed this, but uh, the Chachamim argued with him, so don't bring a raya from what you did in front of Rabbi Yehuda. So the Gemara says, why did they not tell Rabbi the same thing that they told Rabbi Yudah himself? Why don't they tell Rabbi that you can't bring a raya from what you did before your bar mitzvah as a cotton? So the Gemara says, you're right. They were saying to him one point and additional point. Number one, the cotton of Yisa. You were then a cotton, so you can't testify about when you were a cotton. Another point, even if you wore a godl, you can't, don't bring us a raya from the opinion of Rabbi Uday, he's the one that was matter. But the Chachamim disagree with this, and therefore we pass him that a cotton should not read a Megillah for everyone, whether he is below Chachinuch, and even if he reached Chachinuch, he doesn't read the Megillah for everyone. So, you don't read the Megillah, and you don't make a bris Megillah, and you don't go to the mikveh. This is talking about a zav that has to go to the mikveh on the seventh day. So he doesn't go to the mikveh, v'loy mazin, and you don't spray the waters of uh, the waters that you have to spray from the pot aduma. V'chein shemeres yoyim keneged yoyim. Also a shemeres yoyim keneged yoyim. This is a woman actually that had one omission and she has to wait a day. That's what shemeres means. She has to wait a day and then the following day she goes to the mikveh. So loy titbal, she doesn't go to the mikveh. At Shetane Tzachama, until Netzachama in the morning. So this At Shetane Tzachama is going on all these things we just mentioned in the Mishnah. All of these things have to be done daytime, and what's called daytime? Netzachama. Okay, when you have the first shine of the sun. And Vakulon, however, all of them, Sha'asum Sha'ala Mudashachar Kosher. All of them, even if it was done from Aloysa Shachar, so they are, they are going to be Yaitse. Okay, because really, daytime begins, the Gemara will see, will, will, will bring a source from Sukkim, that daytime actually does begin from Aleisa Shachar. There's, however, there's Xerim and Rabbanon, that because Aleisa Shachar it's still dark and you don't notice that it's already day, so therefore wait until Netzach when you can actually see that it's light. But it's only Xerim and Rabbanon. But the other though, if you did any of these things already from Aleisa Shachar, you'll be Yitzah. <coughs> okay, so the Gemara is going to bring the source. For all of these halachas of the Mishnah that has to be done during the day. We know long from where do we know this? The Omakra, the Pasuk says, 
So as we said before, you learn out from Nizkarim that you have to read the Megillah. And what does it say here? Yomim, during the day. By Yomim, by day you read the Megillah, Balai Loloi, but not by night. So we're not talking about the Chiv of reading the Megillah by night. The Gemara said before that you have to repeat the Megillah and you read it by night as well. But the main Chiv of the Megillah, which is by day, that has to be Hayomim, during the day. So the Gemara... Lamed to have it, that's what Mark explains here. Lamed to have it to you to the Rabbi Shua ben Levi. Doesn't this refute what Rabbi Shua ben Levi said? Dom Rabbi Shua ben Levi, Chai Vadim Lekresis and Megillah, Balai Level Shanoisa by Yoy. Yes, you read the Megillah by day and by night. So you see that you read the Megillah by night as well. And for the Gemara, Kikatani Ad Yoy. We're talking about the Chiv of the day, which is actually the main Chiv of the Megillah, and that could only be from, from Netzachama. Then it said, Veloy Malin. A bris meal also has to be on the eighth day. You can't make it from the night before. It has to be by yom by day. Then it said v'loy tovlin v'loy mazen the tefila and the haza is also by day. The chsev the pasuk says v'hiza hatoir al atame by yom ashvi that you have to sprinkle. When is it by yom ashvi on the seventh day? And then we also say the same thing regarding tefila that the tefila on the seventh day is also by day because ve'iskish tefila la zayim. Further in the Pasik you see that Tfila is compared to Azoya, because right after that in the Pasik there it says Verochatz Bamayim Vitoya. So it talks about Tfila, so we compare the two. Chain, the same is also with a Tvila. Tvila by Azov. Azov that has to go to the mikvah on the seventh day. Yeah. Same as by a woman that has to wait one day, if she so had one emission. So she waits one day. She should only go to the mikveh the next day, not at night. Isn't this obvious? The question of the Gemara is, if we're saying that we have a, a, a source for all tefillahs, that it should be by day, why are we singling out this one case of this Shemar Yaim that her tefillah has to be by day? We just brought a source that all tefillahs have to be by day, so she should be included. So the Gemara says, uh, here, this is part of the question. Why should this case of the Shemeres Yoim be different than any of the other people that are high to go to the Mikveh? Answers the Gemara, it's Terech. No, I do need this to say this separately. Because Sal Kedai Techamine, I would think to say, Tehevi Kedia Rishayin Eshlozov. Maybe I should compare this woman that had one omission to a man, to a Zov, that also had one omission. And what's the halacha by a man that has one omission? By a man that has one omission, the halacha is iskish lebalkeri. He's compared to a balkeri. The omission of a balkeri and a zav is not exactly physically the same, but nevertheless we compare them. And what do we say? So we compare the two, the zav and a person that has an omission of shikh vazera, and we say ma balkeri toivul bayoyim. Just like a Balkari, what happens to a Balkari? He doesn't have to wait at all. A Balkari goes to the mikveh immediately, right? right then. So the same thing also, Hainami litbel biyoyme. Same thing also with a person that's a Zav and had one omission, he can go to the mikveh right then, he doesn't have to wait at all. That's the halacha for a man that's a Zav, that he doesn't have to wait at all. But now, the Gemara says, maybe we should apply a similar thing regarding a woman that she does not have to wait all the way to the next day. But the Gemara clarifies, by a Zav, by a man, the Allah is that he could go to the mikveh immediately. But we cannot suggest to say that for a woman as well, if she had one omission, that she could go to the mikveh immediately. That not, because the Gemara is going to bring a source that you can't say that. So let's see inside the Gemara. The Gemara says, Vaha, now this woman, be ye mama, on the actual day when she had an omission, tavla. So then she can't go to the mikveh because we, this is the concept of waiting. The chsev, kol yimei zayva kemishkav nidasa, when she, when she sees a, an omission like a zava, it's similar to her being a nida, ye Allah, this should be for her. So the Gemara Darshans, this is a Gemara in Masech the Nida, that says that ye Allah teaches me that she has to wait. So she at least has to wait until the next day. That's, this, this is the source of Shemeres, Yoyim Kenegadim, that she has to wait one day. But the question though is, what does it mean to wait one day? Does she, have to, uh, does she have to actually wait until the next day by day? Or maybe she waits till the following day, which really starts already from the night? So maybe by night already she can go to the mikveh. That's what we would think, that we compare it to a Zav that goes to the mikveh right away. So maybe this woman, even if she has to wait, but she could only wait until that very night. So Balelia Mies Leavid Miktas Shimur, let her wait until that night. So she's already waiting somewhat. And the Tilt let her go to the mikveh that night. So 
So therefore, Kamash Malan, that's why our Mishnah had to say that this is not so. Kivin the boy Since I'm learning out from this pasuk Yila that she has to count one day, so the moment you have to say she has to count sfire bi yamamahu. Counting is counting till the next day, just like you find when you count seven days. So you have to count seven days until you come to the seventh day, daytime. You can't count until the night of the seventh day. That you go to the mikvah on the seventh day, daytime. So too with this shemer esjem that counts one day, she has to count one day until the next day, and not the night. That was the Chiddush of our Mishnah. Then the Mishnah said, the kulan shasum shalom kosher. Even though the Rabbanon, you should wait until nets, but if you already did all of these things from Aleisa Shacha, you are, it is kosher. Because really Aleisa Shacha starts, that's, the, that's when day begins. You know, immediately from where do we know this? Omar Rabbe, Omar Rabbe, that is, the Omar the Pasuk says, Vayikra elakim lo'er yayim. The Hebrew to call is light day. What does light mean? Lemeir uba, from the moment that it begins becoming light, which is from Aleisa Shachar, even though it's not light yet. Kara yayim, the Hebrew calls it day. So the Gemara says this is not a good source because Ela meyato, if so, v'lachoy shech kara layla. When it says Eivish refers to darkness as night, does that mean l'machshech uba kara layla? From when it begins becoming dark, he calls night, which would mean basically from shkia, when the sun starts going down, or when the, when the sun went down and it starts becoming dark, that's when it's light. But that's not true. Hakaim alone, we know the Allah is the at says kichovim lav lailu until the three stars come out and it's not actually dark, it's not night yet. So we see when it says valachaishah kara laila that is, what does valachaishah kara laila mean? When it's actually dark. So if so, say the same thing by, by the day. When it's actually light, it's day, not by Allah Sashacha. Elam Rabzaira, as Rabzaira brings a different source, Mehacha. There's a Pasuk here that speaks about the Yidin in the time of the second base of Mikdash. They came back to Eretz Yisrael to build a wall, the city, the Rishalayim, the, the wall around the city. So it says there, We're doing the work. Half of the people are holding uh, spears in their hands to protect. From, from, one, from when are they working? From the time of Eloisa Shachar. Until when the sun, when the, when the stars, that is, comes out. So, okay, so we see here they worked all day and it started from Aleisa Shacha. And Vo'aymer, the Pasuk there continues and says, that the night we would stand guard and by day they would work. That's the continuation over there of the Pasuk. It says that uh, by day they would work. So the Gemara explains why is it bringing two Pesukimer, my Vo'aymer, why is it bringing the second Pasuk? In the first Pasuk you see that they would work from Aleisa Shachar until Tzaysa Kechavim, and they would work by day. So we see that when does day start? From Alois HaShachar. So the Gemara explains, because if you would argue and say, could be that from Alois HaShachar it's not yet day. And maybe you would also argue that as soon as it's sundown, it's already night. Aye, they worked longer hours than that. The Inu and these people then, they were so enthusiastic about building, rebuilding the city of Yerushalayim. They got up earlier than day and they started working from Aleisa Shachar, even though it's still night. And they worked late into the night, even after sundown, even though it's not day anymore. Maybe that's the Pshat of here. Toshima, that's why it brings the, the continuation of the Pasik. What does it say there? Nighttime we were standing guard. Only daytime we worked. So the Pasik clearly says that it's only day that they worked. So if it's only day that they worked, and it says that they worked from Aleisa Shachar until Tzai so we know that from Aleisa Shachar until Tzai Sakechavim has the Allah of day. This is the source that day starts from Aleisa Shachar. Correct. Okay, but it's still though that uh, the sun is very far away that it, it didn't it didn't actually appear over the horizon. So it's not it's the, the, you don't have the nets of the chama that shine of the star the sun that comes over the horizon. But because it's getting closer, so therefore it, there's there is already beginning of a shine that comes. Correct. You can read the Megillah the entire day. And also, the, the Mishnah is going to bring a list of things that can be done by day, and it can be done the entire day. You could say Halal all day. Shefer could be blown all day. Lentilas Lulav, the mitzvah of Lulav. Or Lentilas Musaf, you could have a Musaf. Ulu Musaf, the actual carbon Musaf, also all day. Ulu Hapadim. This is a vidui, a confession that's done on Parim. Rashi says this is a par that's being brought by the entire Tzibur. When you have a Bezdin that paskins something, 
and they even did Bishagig and Aveda, and it has to be brought for the entire Tzibur. So this could also be the Vidu, it could be done all day. Or the Vidu Meiser. Vidu Meiser is when you have to empty out your house of Meiser once in three years, then this is done out of Pesach time. So this is also during the day, all day. Or the Vidu Yom Kippurim. The Vidu, the confession of the Kain God, Yom Kippur, also all day. The Smicha, the Smicha on a carbon, the Shechita, the Shechita of a carbon. The Tnufa, when you have to raise up the, the different things of carbonus that have to be raised up, also all day. La Hagosha, this is by a carbon mincha, when you have to bring it close to the Mizbeach. La Kmitza, the Kmitza of a carbon mincha. La Haktara, being makter, burning the, the mincha on the Mizbeach. La Melike, which is by the birds, instead of the Shechita, you do Melike with the fingernail. La Kabbalah, receiving the blood. La Azaya, sprinkling the blood on the Mizbeach. La Shkoya Saita, Giving a sight to the woman that it's, uh, there's a doubt whether she was Mizana or not, the halacha of a sight, so this is done also all day. Or la rifas agala, the halacha of, of the agala, when there's a person found dead and you have to do, take the, the egla rufa. Or la and then when a metzayda is found to be tahir and there's the process of what you do with him on that day, so this is also all day. Then <coughs> there's other things that are done by night, and they could also be done all night. All night you can cut the Aymer, and also the burning of the fats and the pieces of the carbonus that go on the Mizbech can be done all night. Here's the rule. Anything that it's, that it's mitzvah is daytime. So the mitzvah, it's kosher to be done all day. If the mitzvah is at night, so it's, it's kosher to be done the entire night. There is, however, Ben Egele Moshel, Hekta Chalav and Veivarim, there's the Gzayda, the Gemara will bring it at the end, there's the Gzayda of Chazal, the very first Mishnah of, the, of Shas, that it can be done only until Chatzais, that's only a Gzayda of Chazal, but Minat it can be done all night. And the that's if you already daven Mincha, but uh, theoretically though, if you daven Mincha very late, right. Musaf itself though, it, it could be go, it could, theoretically it can be done all day. Sure, there's most things in done. The what? There's, there's, more, there's more things, things than this? Done. I don't know, maybe. I don't know, let's hear, what else? Ton of Ishayer? A bris you could do all day. A bris you could do all day, Nusa, it says it. doesn't say about a bris. No, it doesn't say the bris, does it? No. Okay, Taka, why not? Maybe because reason Magdimen, you're supposed to do it earlier on in the day. Okay, that's the like Yeah, yeah, okay. Most of it cannot do all day, but it cannot be done at the middle. Okay. I hear you. Two candles, two candles, like this. Nope. Okay, the Gemara is going to bring psukim, a source for each one of these halachas. Minalon, so starting with the Megillah, from where do we know that you can read the Megillah all day? The makra vehayomimei, leniskarim venasim. So yomim means days, all day. But Kriyas Halal, how do you know Hal can be done all day? Because the Pasik says, Mi Mizrach Shemesh Ad Mavoye, from when the sun comes up to, to sundown, all day. Rav Yaisi Aimer, another Gerson the Gemara is Rav Yaisi Aimer, it says, Zehaye Masa Hashem, we say in Halal, this is the day Hashem created, all day. Unetilas Lulev, how do we know that Lulev is all day? Dichsev Ulekachtam Lachem, Bayoim Marishain, Bayoim means all day. Kiyashay for Dichsev, Yoim Trua Yelachem, and Yoim means all day. Lamasafin, the the carbon uh, musaf that is the chesiv dvar yoyim biyoyim when it speaks about the carbon musaf it says dvar yoyim biyoyim on its day and all day tefillas am musaf and davening musaf is all day kim musaf and shavuah rabbanon the rabbanon compare it to the carbon musaf that can be done all day or the vidu parim the vidu of the parim which refers to a par that the tzibur has to bring as a carbon. The Yalif, Kapara Kapara, Miyayim Akipurim. We learn out the term Kapara that it says here from the term Kapara, it's Xayda Shaveh, from what it says by Yom Kippur. And the Tanya, what does it say by Yom Kippur? Gabi Yom Akipurim, it says, Vichiper Ba'ada Yva'ad Beisai, that when the Kayan confesses for himself and for his family, so Kapara's Dvarim Hakasav Medaber. That Lashon of Vichiper does not refer to the sprinkling of the blood, it refers to the confession. The Kapara, Biyamamod Echsev. And over there, the Kapara is by day. Because it says, by Yoyim Hazeh Yechaper Aleichem. So just like there, it can be done all day, so too the kapara of the par that the tzibur brings is all day. Well, Levidu Yimai said also all day, the tzibur, Amarta Lefnei Hashem Lekecha Biyarti Akredish Men Abayis, you confess and you just tell the Ebishter, I took everything out of the house. The Samech Lei, it says right afterwards, Hayoyim Hazeh Hashem Lekecha Metzavcha, on this day. Svich and L'Shchite, it's also all day, the tzibur, the Samech, the Shochat, and except by shechita, by shechita it says, "Be yoyim zivchachem," on the day that you bring the carbon, all day. 
Ula Tnufa, Tnufa is also all day, the Chsiv, Biyayim Hanifchem Esaime. So it says, yes, Biyayim, which means all day. Ula Hagosha, when you bring the Mincha to the Mizbeach, the Iskish, the Tnufa, it's compared to Tnufa in the Pasik. The Chsiv, Laka Chakayim, Yad, the Isha, Smilchis, Aknois, Vehainif. And then it says, Vehikri, Vehikri is the Hagosha, when you bring it to the Mizbeach. Le Malike, Le Kmitze, Le Haktara, Le Hazaya, all of these are done by day. The Chsiv, Biyayim, Tzavaisa, as Bene Yisrael, Biyayim means all day. Lashkai is saita. The saita could be drink the waters all day. Asya taira taira. Gzeir shava of the two words of taira. Ksev hacha of asala kain is called hataira zayis. The kain should say should do for everything like it says here the halach of this taira. Or ksev hasam. There's another pasuk that it says regarding judgment. When could you judge? Al piat taira asher yerucha va'ala mishpat. So there it uses the term taira regarding judgment. Ma mishpat bayayim, just like judgment is only by day, Rashi brings the source because it says bayayim hanchile is banov, afkan bayayim. So to the saita is done only during the day.